Um, so I'm going to read uh, one of those journal entries, and this was written by Sylvia Plath. Um, and it's incredible because it's Sylvia Plath's first person experience, but it's also my first person experience, and it's also your first person experience. What's happening here is she has a crush on someone, and everything that goes along with having a crush on someone, she just nails it. And I mean, it's, it's really incredible, and I'm so glad her journals were published, because the, the thought that this might remain hidden forever is you know, sort of tragic. Um, so she's 17 years old um, when she writes this. It's the summer before she goes to college, and it's July 1950. Emile. <coughs> there it is, his name. And what can I say? I can say he called me at 9 Saturday night and that I was still weak from having two wisdom teeth out that morning. I can say that we went on a double date dancing at Ten Acres, that I drank five glasses in the course of the evening to the bottom of sparkling tawny ginger ale while others drank beer, but that's not it, not at all. This is how it was. I dressed slowly, smoothing, perfuming, powdering. I sat upstairs in the moist gray twilight with the rain trickling down outside while the family talked and laughed with company down on the porch. <coughs> This is I, I thought, the American virgin, dressed to seduce. I know I'm in for an evening of sexual pleasure. We go on dates, we play around, and if we're nice girls, we demure at a certain point. And so it goes. We walked into the bar and sat down, two by two. He and I had the initial strangeness to rub off. We began to talk about the funeral he went to this morning, about his 20-year-old cousin who broke his back and is paralyzed for life, about his sister who died of pneumonia at 12 years, Good Lord, we're morbid tonight, he shuddered. And then, you know something I've always liked, I mean wanted to like? Dark eyes and blonde hair. So we talked about little things. How words lose their meaning when you repeat them over and over. How we always liked the age we were at best. There was more small talk, more laughing, sidelong glances. More of the unspoken physical friction that makes each new conquest so delightful. In the air was the strong smell of masculinity which creates the ideal medium for me to exist in. There was something in Emile tonight, a touch of seriousness, a chemical magnetism that met my mood the way pieces of a child's puzzle fit together. He has a fine face, dark hair and eyes with enormous black pupils, a straight nose, a one-sided flashing grin, a clean-cut chin. He is neatly made with small, sensitive hands. I knew it would be the way it was. On the dance floor, he held me close to him, the hard line of his penis taut against my stomach, my breasts aching firm against his chest, and it was like warm wine flooding through me, a sleepy electric drowsiness. He nuzzled his face in my hair, kissed my cheek. Don't look at me, he said. I've just come out of the swimming pool, hot and wet. God, I knew it would be like this. He was looking at me intently, searchingly, and our eyes met. I went under twice. I was drowning, and he flicked his gaze away. On the way to Wari's at midnight, Emile kissed me in the car, his mouth wet and gentle on mine. At Wari's, more ginger ale, more beer, and dancing with the dim light from the porch. Emile's body warm and firm against mine, rocking back and forth to the soft erotic music. And so we left. It was pouring rain. In the car, he put his arm around me, his head against mine, and we watched the streetlights coming at us, blurred and fluid in the watery dark. As we ran up the walk in the rain, he came in and had a drink of water. As he kissed me goodnight, I knew that something in me wanted him. For what? I'm not sure. He drinks, he smokes, he's Catholic. <laughs> he runs around with one girl after another, and yet I wanted him. I don't have to tell you it's been nice, I said at the door. It's been marvelous, he smiled. I'll call you, take care, and he was gone. So the rain comes down hard outside my window, and like Edie Cohen, I say, 15,000 years of what? We're still nothing but animals. Somewhere in his room, Emile lies about to sleep. God knows what he's thinking. <laughs>